Good afternoon once again, everyone. It is good uh, to be together with you as we spend the next 15 minutes or so uh, in uh, prayer together and reading of scripture and reading some uh, excerpts from other authors and theologians uh, for reflection. During that time, again, our hope is that uh, the Holy Spirit will bring something off the page for us uh, that uh, God is really... Uh, wanting us, uh, whatever that is, wanting us to go into that quiet time so that he can continue to speak to us about it in his uh, still small voice. So that's what this time together is about. It is hearing these words of scripture, hearing the word from God, and words that are in uh, hymns of praise to him, uh, reflections on readings, uh, and then um, continuing to allow God to teach us or to show us something that uh, he wants to show us from all of that. So it's not your usual Bible study or prayer meeting or hymn sing. This is just a time for us to set aside and be committed as brothers and sisters in Christ to be here together for this first 15 minutes. And then we go into our alone time together afterwards. And so again, welcome to uh, lunchtime with Pastor Shane. And as we get started here, I'm going to share something as always with the, from the world's greatest collection of church jokes. This one is called Faithful with Much. At a Wednesday evening church meeting, a very wealthy man rose to give his testimony. I'm a millionaire, he said, and I attribute it all to the rich blessings of God in my life. I can still remember the turning point in my faith. I had just earned my first dollar, and I went to a church meeting that night. The speaker was a missionary who told about his work. I knew that I only had a dollar bill and had either to give it all to God's work or nothing at all. So at that moment, I decided to give my whole dollar to God. I believe that's why I'm a millionaire today. As he finished, it was clear that everyone was moved by the man's story. As he took his seat, a little old lady sitting in the same pew leaned over and said, Wonderful story. I dare you to do it again. <laughs> may be a little harder to give all he had uh, when he now has a million dollars. So I, that made me chuckle, but um, I hope uh, you were at least amused by it. Well, let's go to the Lord and invite the Holy Spirit into our time uh, here, as that is really the purpose of this, is to, uh, to uh, ask for that special uh, outpouring and infilling of the Holy Spirit as we ask him to teach us uh, something from our uh, scriptures and and readings today. Let's pray. O oh God, our Father, renew our spirits and draw our hearts to yourself, that our work may not be to us a burden, but a delight. And give us such love of you that it will sweeten all our obedience. Help us that we may serve you with the cheerfulness and gladness of children, delighting ourselves in you and rejoicing in all that is to the honor of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, as you're aware, our uh, psalm reading uh, for this uh, this week is Psalm 32. And so uh, you'll recall that the theme for this week is called From Death to Life, as we approach this fifth Sunday in Lent. And so we're going to read from Psalm 32, and we're, I'm going to be reading it from the New Living Translation. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. Day and night your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, let all the godly pray to you while there is still time that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. 
I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy, all you whose hearts are pure. Well, what word or phrase jumped out at you this time? In a little bit different translation, so maybe uh, that helped, uh, helped a, a certain verse to uh, kind of come to you that would not have other, otherwise. And then our daily scripture reading for this week on this Thursday comes from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. Again, that's Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. I'm going to read it from the New International Version. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. You have made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin, the foreigner's stronghold a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will honor you. Cities of ruthless nations will revere you. You have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the storm, and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm driving against a wall, and like the heat of the desert. You silence the uproar of foreigners, as heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud. So the song of the ruthless is stilled. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Well, let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation indeed, especially as we are approaching Easter here and getting ready to celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Well, the reading uh, for reflection then uh, for today comes from Waiting for God by uh, Simone Weil. This is what he writes. We may have to strive after goodness with an effort of our will is one of the lies invented by the mediocre part of ourselves and its fear of being destroyed. Such an effort does not threaten it in any way. It does not even disturb its comfort, not even when it entails a great deal of fatigue and suffering. For the mediocre part of ourselves is not afraid of fatigue and suffering. It is afraid of being killed. There are people who try to raise their souls like a man continually taking standing jumps in the hopes that if he jumps higher every day, a time may come when he will no longer fall back but will go right up to the sky. Thus occupied, he cannot look at the sky. We cannot take a single step toward heaven. It is not in our power to travel in a vertical direction. If, however, we look heavenward for a long time, God comes and takes us up. He raises us easily. So a good uh, vision there of uh, in a, in a truth that we cannot uh, do, uh, do that in our own power. We cannot have a relationship with God in our own power. We cannot, uh, we cannot receive a resurrection body and be resurrected to heaven someday in our own power, no matter how hard we, we try. We simply know this is a process as we uh, accept uh, Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We look heavenward. We allow his sanctifying grace to continue to work uh, on us uh, as a day by day we grow closer to God until that uh, day when he comes and takes us to be with himself. Well, we come to that awesome time where we can pray for each other. So I know that there's probably some people who have some things uh, on your heart that you want to lift up. So if you want to do that now, and I'll close us uh, in prayer and close us out. Let's pray.
Lord God, we uh, all come to you at this point with in different places uh, in this week and uh, different situations, issues at hand. And so some of us have come to you rejoicing and with those uh, who have done so, we rejoice with them. Others have come to you weeping and they have grief in their hearts from uh, perhaps a lost loved one, someone uh, that was near and dear to them. And we grieve with them uh, and weep with them. And uh, others have come with brokenness in their lives and need of healing. And we come and sit with them all uh, together. Lord, we come and ask for wholeness, and for comfort, for counsel that we know that your Holy Spirit can give. And so we lift these people to you. We have brought them to you as brothers and sisters carrying our friends, our close friends uh, on a mat to lay them at your feet. And we know that you uh, have heard these prayers, that you do all things well. And we trust in your holy name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the uh, hymn by Charles Wesley uh, was, O love divine, what hast thou done? And we've already uh, been through the first three verses, so I'm just going to read all verses uh, to you. O love divine, what hast thou done? The incarnate God hath died for me. The Father's co-eternal Son bore all my sins upon the tree. The Son of God hath for me hath died. My Lord, my love is crucified. Is crucified for me and you to bring us rebels near to God. Believe, believe the record true. Ye all are brought bought with Jesus' blood. Pardon for all flows from his side. My Lord, my love is crucified. Behold him, all ye that pass by, the bleeding prince of life and peace. Come sinners, see your Savior die, and say, was ever grief like his? Come fill with me his blood applied. My Lord, my love is crucified. Amen. That again by Charles Wesley. Well, I... Uh, Appreciate you joining me here each day as we uh, near uh, go through this Lent season and near Easter and that Resurrection Sunday. Um, thank you for joining me, and I hope that you are getting as much out of it as I am, that you are spending that quality time, that you are meditating on what we hear, whatever word or phrase jumped out at you, that you're journaling about it. Uh, that is uh, how we get the most out of uh, Scripture reading. Uh, and of course, beyond this time, uh, you know, in this first 15 minutes, the time you spend alone. There's other time that you can spend then after journaling and meditating on it. If you still have uh, questions or thoughts, you can go to a good commentary. You can talk about it with your Christian friend or friends. Uh, or call and talk, call me and we can talk about it. But uh, thank you so much for being here until tomorrow, uh, Friday, our last day this week. Uh, hear this benediction. Be bound to Christ for this day and always. Amen. And amen. We'll see you tomorrow. Blessings on you.